<laughs> Welcome to The Real Talk with your host, Ronnie Dior. And Elder Avery Henry. Here on The Real Talk, we will provide basic instructions before leaving Earth through studying the Word of God and how it applies to our lives. You will also receive inspirational messages and real conversations about life challenges, relationships, and everyday living. We'll keep it real, real honest, honest, and transparent. transparent. So we're still talking about this series, A Fight Broke Out. A Fight Broke Out. And we're dealing with unexpected spiritual warfare. That's been the premise um, behind the series. Um, is just that, you know, you're going through your Christian walk. You're going through what you believe, you know, to be living your best life. And then all of a sudden, a fight just breaks out. The thing about it is, as, as long as we are... The men and women of God are assured victory. The life of a believer, I don't believe it's hard. I believe it's challenging. And there's a difference between being challenging and being hard. Because the Bible talks about how the way of a transgressor is hard. But if you're walking in the way you should be going, your life isn't as a hard life. You just have some challenges. And God is with you every step of the way. So we're going to go get in the word of God. Our, our scripture is coming from Ephesians chapter 6. Verses 10 through 18. That's Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Um, I'll be reading the New Living Translation. Um, but you, you know, you can read your King James, your New King James, whatever version. It pretty much, other than a couple of minor words, we'll be reading the same thing. It says, A final word be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. Verse 14, stand your ground, put on the belt of truth and a body of armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so, so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying in the spirit at all times and on every occasion, stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. So we're talking about a fight broke out. Um, and one of our base scriptures we in 1 Peter 4 and 12, it says, Brethren, think if not strange, the fiery trial which comes to try you as though some strange thing happened. In other words, don't think it weird when you start dealing with stuff. Don't think it's abnormal when you start coming up against some things in your life. It's just par for the course. Um, but, you know, be faithful, knowing that God is faithful. And sometimes, you know, a fight just breaks out. It doesn't mean that you necessarily had done any sin. It doesn't mean that you got something that's on course. But because you decided to live right. I taught this in Sunday school. And I said, because you decided to give God a qualified yes, because you gave him a qualified yes, that subject your life to the fight. The Bible talks about all those that live godly shall suffer persecution. Persecution is just part of it. But just knowing that if I'm going to be in a fight, I got to be conditioned to fight at all times. And not only conditioned to fight at all times, I got to be conditioned to win. And when God gave me this series, it was based upon, you know, my wife and a few of the other first ladies in the church was decided to go on a fast um, for some things that were happening. And I was awakened um, about four o'clock that morning because me and another one of the pastors decided to go on a fast with them. And when God had given me revelation to saying that some of the things that were happening, um, because I, I was aware of some challenges that were happening, not only in my life, but at others, but that some of those challenges were happening was simply a fight broke out. 
and he gave me a five part series. Um, and we're we're on part three of that five part series. And part one, uh, we talked about, you know, you receive my instructions in the dressing room. Now obey my command. That's the the instruction that the referee gives the fighters before they touch gloves and fight. And so we have to know that we've already received instructions, which is the word of God. And so we are to obey his commandments. And so by obeying his commandments, we are conditioned for the fight. And we talked about in week one that in knowing that we have to stay in the gym, we have to in staying in our spiritual gym. That's when we get the road work. That's when we practice or emulate when a trial or when a fight is about to happen. And the more you prepare before you get into a fight, the more successful you will be in the fight. So in other words, I don't wait for to get into the fight, to start reading my Bible, to start praying, to start doing spiritual reps. I'm conditioned because I receive instructions and I obey every one of his commandments. Therefore, I know that I am conditioned for the fight. We also talked about in week one, being in that gym, I'm around other stable mates or other gym mates, and they are encouraging me to go forward and to fight with me because they're going to have to fight themselves. Their fight date may not be the same as my fight date, but eventually we will all fight. And we talked about on week two that once you get in the ring, you have to deal with body blows. Body blows are meant from one fighter to another to weaken the opponent. That child that just started acting up out of nowhere, that's a body blow. Um, unexpected financial trials that seem to take the wind out of you. That's a body blow. And the thing about a sustained body attack is that it's designed so that you lose stamina. Um, one of its other design is to keep you off balance. And then it's also meant for you to drop your hands. And so when we talked about on the last time in part two, that when I drop my hands, I get hit with blows that I have no, no business getting hit with, but that the proper guard is to keep my hands up and tuck my face under my chin and then my elbow square so that I'm less likely to get hit with a body blow. And when I do get hit with a body blow, you're hitting my elbows and you're not taking the wind out of you. So in part three, we're going to deal with the continuance of the fight and what happens when you drop your guard. And that's why you have to guard your grill, which is your facial area, your head area, your upper body. You have to guard your grill. Um, this is what happens after the body attack. The thing about our adversary is he's systematic in his approach. If he can keep you out of the gym, you're going to show up flat in the ring, which is part one. If he can hit you with enough body blows, you're not going to have your hands up. You're not going to defend yourself and you're not going to throw anything back. And then you'll get hit with headshots. So you have to guard your grill. And I'm going to deal with four points. Um, and one of the points have a sub points of how you can tell when you dealt with headshots or head trauma and why you need to guard your grill. You know, one clear sign um, that you did not guard your grill is that, as I said a few moments ago, you continue to take headshots. And if you keep attacking the head, the body will eventually fall. So after a fighter has taken enough punishment and he's dropped his guard, he now is susceptible, excuse me, to headshots. And if you keep getting headshots, keep taking head trauma, your equilibrium is off and you will get knocked out. Now, remember what the Bible says is that we're not fighting against earthly vessels. We're not fighting against natural enemies, but we're fighting against spiritual wickedness. We're not fighting against flesh and bloods, but evil rulers and things in the unseen world against mighty powers of darkness. And the thing about mighty powers of darkness, if you are not protected, these things are trauma to your head or your mind or your soulish realm. And a lot of people are falling faint nowadays is because they suffered a lot of head trauma. They didn't guard their grill. And when you don't guard your grill and you're susceptible to head trauma, you don't move around the ring like you're supposed to be moving around. You, you're, you're not protecting yourself as you you as you will. And, and we're going to talk about some other effects of head trauma is because you did not protect 
this up here and you did not guard your grill. Most of the things that we deal with and you see that are actions that people are dealing with, it's because of head trauma. It's because of sustained head trauma that is causing people to lose balance. When you get hit with a good head shot, it knocks you off balance. It knocks you off balance. And sometimes you need to move out of the way before you take another headshot so that you do not get knocked off balance. And that's what's happening as a believer. We must stay on balance. Now, in week one, we talked about that gym and we talked about sparring um, as a part of preparing you for what you can anticipate sparring. Well, in sparring, they have headgear um, and that headgear is so that you don't get caught with nothing wild. And also, if your defense isn't tight, so if your defense is not tight, then let's say you get hit with a headshot, I could practice my bobbing, my weaving, by getting out of the way if I get my headgear on. Well, the, the good news about this particular fight is just that I get to go into the ring with headgear, and that headgear is the helmet of salvation. Do not go into a spiritual fight without your armor on and the most important piece which is your headgear because it's your headgear that's going to protect you and i've seen too many saints that are trying to fight a spiritual war without headgear on and the thing about it is we're not smart enough to outsmart the devil we're not smart enough to outthink some of the spiritual things that we get ourselves in so you must keep your headgear on at all times even when I'm not fighting, I have to be prepared to have my headgear on and not even just my headgear, any other piece of armor, because I don't know when I'm going to be thrust into a fight. I don't know when I'm going to be thrust into a fight. So it, it's imperative that I keep my headgear on. So that's point number one. A clear sign that you did not guard your grill is because you keep taking headshots. Headshots could be um, headshots that show up in your mind, the attacks that hit your mind, attacks that hit your thought life. These are all signs that I did not guard myself because I keep taking headshots. It's not a problem with taking a shot. It's just that I, I shouldn't keep hitting, getting hit with the same shot over and over. And I was watching a fight, the fight that I law, um, watched two weeks ago, my fighter lost. And one of the things we noticed is that he was weight drained. So he didn't cut weight properly. And because he didn't get, he didn't condition himself properly, he took blows to the head that he shouldn't have been taking. And he was actually walking into shots and every shot weakened him. What am I saying? It's just that although we're dealing with guard your grill and we're on part three, the principles for, for week one and two apply. You still got to protect yourself at all times. You still got to watch your body because if your body is weakened, you're going to take some headshots and you're going to walk into headshots. Point number two is prolonged head trots can lead to what I call head trauma, which does not show up in a fight, but you see the results after the fight. So a person who's been knocked out a few times in the ring and then they get back and then they get knocked out and then they take a lot of punishment to the head. The thing about it is that you may not see the head trauma immediately to after the fight. And then sometimes is what goes on long after several fights for where you say, OK, you're dealing with head trauma. You are dealing with head trauma. One of the signs that you're dealing with head trauma or you taking a head trauma or too many blows to the head is the fighter then has what's called blurred vision. So if you're finding yourself where you're not, this is the A part of point two, if you're not seeing things the way God sees them, even though you're doing a routine, some of it is because you've taken some head trauma. And because you've taken a significant amount of head trauma, your vision is blurred. 
Bible talks about without a vision, the people perish. Without a vision, the people perish. And so if you're not seeing things and your vision is continually to being blurred, ask yourself, have I taken a lot of sustained blows to the head? So you got to remember in inside of the head um, or the mind is the, is the soulless realm. It's where we think about things. It's how we, uh, how we, cont- how we contemplate things. Satan sits on the seat of emotions. And a lot of times we're dealing with head trauma that's blurring the vision and we can't see what God is doing. What am I saying? That broken relationship, whether it's a romantic relationship, whether it's um, family relationship, whether it's family trauma, those are all headshots. And if you take enough of that, you won't see properly what God is trying to do. It's because you got blurred vision. You got hit with a shot that rocked you and you didn't have the proper time to recover. See, sometimes um, whether we whether we choose to believe it or not, we're going to get hit with some blows in this Christian walk, no matter how much we prepare for it, that you're not going to see coming. The thing about it is, is that I have to give myself time to recover so that I can fight properly. I remember I shared this story. Um, I know I shared it one time. Um, when I was teaching um, Sunday school class, I never, out of all of the fights um, that I've been in, I never got knocked out. But I came close to getting knocked out one time. It's because I was fighting um, this one gentleman, and then his brother came in and sucker punched me and hit me on the side of the head with a blow that I didn't see coming. So I got jumped, essentially. And then the third guy came in and then, you know, hit me as well. And so I find myself... I was fighting three dudes at one time and my vision was blurred. And so what happened is when I got hit with the shot that I didn't see coming, it's almost like a flash that that like someone took a a, a, a photo with a flash on and it ringed in my head and I stumbled a little bit. And then I tried to fight, but I wasn't fighting as good as I was because, number one, I was fighting more than one opponent and I got hit with a shot that I didn't see coming. And so I needed time to recover. So what am I saying is is that you will have blurred vision if you take a headshot that you don't see coming and you do not take the proper time to recover. And sometimes we have to, I keep saying this, you hear me say this on every podcast, um, we have to sometimes be careful with being okay with not being okay. And one of those things is just like, Lord, I took a headshot and that headshot knocked me off that balance. So my vision is a leer is a little blurry. I need time to recover. Another sign that you're suffering head trauma is when you get a concussion, when you get what's called a concussion. Um, a concussion causes, you know, other effects that your body, um, you don't see the effects of a concussion um, to after, but, you know, I, I'm not moving the way I, I need to be moving. Other bodily functions are not functioning the way I'm functioning because I took such a, a violent head trauma that it caused was called a concussion. And we deal with certain things. Remember what I told you, the name of the series is a fight broke out. And sometimes when a fight breaks out, you're going to deal with unsuspected head blows. And if you're not careful, the, the blow could be so violent that you suffer a concussion. So the first stage is you get blurred vision. The next stage, if you're not careful, you get a concussion. And then another third sign of severe head trauma is your speech is now slurred. I've watched um, different boxers and they took so much head trauma is because their speech is blurred, became blurred and they don't talk the same. Like some of my favorite fighters, um, James Tony is one of them. Um, Thomas the Hitman Hearns um, and a few others, you know, they could tell that they were great fighters and the ring, but they didn't know when not to fight. So they took enough head punishment that they suffered head trauma and their speech is slurred. They don't talk the same. So let's equate that in the spiritual realm. If my vision vision is blurred and I suffered a concussion long enough in the spiritual realm, I can know what this word says, but my speech will be a little off. My, I won't be talking the same. It'll be noticeable to everyone else But because I've learned how to live with that condition, I think that I'm talking normal, but everyone know, everyone else recognize from the outside that your speech sounds a little bit different. You stammer when you talk. Um, You're slurring when you say that. You can't 
complete whole sentences. Um, and that happens to us in the spiritual realm. When we take enough body trauma, head trauma, and our speech is slurred, when we should be speaking faith, our speech is just a little bit off. But we've been dealing with that head trauma so long that we got comfortable with not talking the same. So you got to be careful that you don't suffer pro. These are all effects of what's called prolonged headshots, prolonged headshots, blurred vision, walking to spiritual concussion. You should be walking in faith and then all of a sudden you're fainting and passing out out of nowhere. And then when you get up and you, you try to talk, you're stammering with your words. We well, you used to speak with confidence, but your, your speech is not the same. So these are signs of head trauma. The third thing is you must guard your grill because you don't want to get hit in the mouth or your nose and it will affect your breathing. As we get into these championship type fights and the longer we stay in the fight, we got to guard our grill because when my nose and all of this gets busted up, I'm having a hard time breathing. And if I'm having a hard time breathing, it's only a matter of time before I spit my mouthpiece out which is point number four, because I can't breathe. And I just say, I don't want to fight no more. I don't want to, we can get to the point where we just say, you know what, Lord, this is a little bit rough. I just don't have the fight. The fight's not in me anymore. I don't, I don't have it. It's because I didn't guard my grill properly. I took too many headshots. I'm having trouble breathing. Have you ever gotten to the point spiritually where you're saying, Lord, I'm just having a problem breathing. I'm having problem just taking a breath. This thing is is rocking me so much that I've taken enough headshots. I'm walking around, barely walking, and I'm just having a problem breathing. And I feel like spitting this mouthpiece out because I just don't want to fight anymore. But I'm going to teach you how to get in the way, get out of the way, excuse me, guard your grill and not take any headshots is is pretty much the same as what was in week two. What we is the same type of some of the same strategies that was in body blows. You got to keep your guard tight. Um, same thing in Ephesians six and eleven. Um, be strong in the Lord and the power might put on the whole armor. Keep your guard tight. When I'm protecting my mid section, um, don't forget to put my knuckles up and to guard my face. And my head. In boxing gym, we call that answering the phone because I'm protecting myself against hitting from the side of my head and to the back. So point number one, keep your guard tight, not even just against body blows, but also against blows that came to hit you in the head with head trauma. One of the things I've watched when I watched um, fighters that think that they got fast hands and then they keep their guard down. And then they're moving with all of this in their body, but they got nothing to protect their face. And so they do all right for a little bit. And then they they throw a jab here. They throw a jab here. They're still moving and bobbing, weaving. But the, the fighter now that begins to watch their body catches them with timing and then throws it with a block, with a shot that they don't see coming. And all of a sudden, that fighter that was dancing around and doing all this movement gets hit with a blow that he doesn't see coming. And all of a sudden, he ro- he gets rocked and he changes the course of the entire fight. What am I saying? is when you're keeping your it's time now to keep your guard tight and you got to know when it's time to keep your guard tight versus doing a lot of dancing it ain't no time to be dancing around the ring when you should be keeping your movements tight it ain't no time to be doing that and clowning your opponent because you don't know what the opponent's about to throw back so i gotta take this serious in the seventh eighth ninth tenth and eleventh round as serious as i took it in the first round because a lot of times when those fighters were doing that and doing all that clowning is because you hit your opponent with something. You didn't knock them out. You were successful. And now you thought it was okay to take your foot off the gas. No, you still got to keep your guard tight and still stay focused the entire fight because you don't want to get hit with, with a blow. And then now you're suffering head trauma. So guard your grill. You got to, while I'm guarding, I'm keeping moving though. 
So I'm moving, but I still keep my guard tight, but I'm still committed to move. So in other words, it's the same thing as last time we met. I'm not going to just sit there and take it. A massive mobile um, tenting just comment, be mighty in the Lord. And part of that being mighty in the Lord is I'm still like week one and two. I'm protecting myself. I got my guard tight and I'm keeping moving. And then the last thing, verses 16 through 18, is I got to commit to fighting back. I got to commit now to not be always on the defensive, but I got to fight back. Why do you think it always says that, you know, taking on the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit with the sword of the spirit. Now I'm going on the offensive. And one of the things is in guarding your grill is sometimes the best defense is the best offense. And, and part of the best offense is to know when you're saying enough is enough. I'm choosing this moment to fight back because I cannot keep taking blows to the head. Because if I keep taking blows to the head, eventually I will get knocked out. So now that I'm guarding myself, I'm also watching my opponent and I'm watching to see when I'm going to fire off around. And so what I mean is that is that you take the verse of scripture, whatever verse of scripture that the Lord gives you, and you are committed to throw a punch back. Throw a punch back. When you hear people talking defeated, well, this is what the Lord allowed me to go through. God caused this sickness to come upon me. Um, it's because they took too many head blows and their speech is blurred and they're not talking back. Protect yourself. Keep it moving, but know when to throw a punch back. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. I'll give you some scripture. It says, from the days of John the Baptist, even to now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, but the violent taketh by force. In other words, the violent know that I, there's some things that God's going to give me and some things after I guard my grill, I'm going to throw a headshot of my own. And in throwing a headshot of my own, I'm committed to fight back. I told him last week, some of the things you have to take back is your time, your recovery, and your faith. These are things that the enemy are trying to knock us out when he hit us with head blows so that I know that he's coming for my head. I'm throwing a headshot of my own so that I am committed now to fight back. God has given you permission in the spirit realm, not just to protect yourself, but also knowing when to go on, on the offensive. The enemy is trying to attack your mind. Past, you say, Pastor Herring, I don't know why I'm having all of these types of thoughts. My mind is just racing. I cannot have the thoughts that, that I'm used to having throw a punch back. It says, finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are just. I'm reading you Philippians 4 and 8. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are a lovely or a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So what am I doing is I'm protecting myself against those thoughts that come against my mind, but I'm throwing something back that when the enemy throws into my thought, depression, I got a jab that's coming back that says, no, my mouth is committed and my head is committed to praise. When and he says that ain't nothing going to go right. If it's nothing, if it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at it all. No, I'm throwing a headshot back and I'm saying whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure. I can't keep taking headshots because my speech will be off. So I'm throwing blows back. So because I'm not wrestling against flesh and blood, then I can't keep taking headshots. So now I take 2 Corinthians chapter 10, where it says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds. So the stronghold that came against my family, the stronghold that came against my spouse, the stronghold that came against my children, I pull it down in the name of Jesus and I throw a punch back and I go back and I snatch back and I recover what was taken from me. When David was fighting um, in Ziglag and they 
they took his wives and they took the children and the men were beginning to lose heart. And David went to the Lord. He said, Lord, shall we re- shall we go against this adversary? And the Lord told him, go and fight back because you will fight back and you will recover all. So what am I saying is throw some punches back. Stop being on the defensive. Because that's another reason why we get hit with blows that we ain't got no business getting hit with is because we're not throwing blows back. Guard your grill. But in part of guarding your grill, go on the offensive. You know, one of the things of of being a believer is a lot of times we're reactive when we should be proactive. And some things God is going to say, you know what? Wait, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And then there are other times where he says, no, go back and get your stuff back. I put enough word in you for you to go back and take back what you need to take back. So I hope this series has been a blessing. Um, I guess my lovely co-host, her meeting went longer. Um, she was supposed to join us. Um, but keep us in your prayers um, as we endeavor to do the will of the Lord. We endeavor to do the the work of the kingdom. And like I said, um, Please, please, please realize that this is a season of reaping, but it's also a season of fighting. And some of the things that happened to you is because a fight broke out. But if you employ these strategies, knowing that in the end, we win. So whatever stage you in the fight, just remember to keep fighting. Remember what we talked about in week one, protect yourselves at all times and keep obeying what's in this good book. I mean, I got my tablet up. Protect yourself at all times. Knowing that I may, part two, I may take some body blows, but I, I can't take too many body blows because the body blows are designed for me to drop my guard. And if I drop my guard, I'm not properly guarding my grill and I'm going to take some head trauma. And the thing about it is, is that if you've taken some trauma, realize that you can go back to your corner and you could talk to your trainer. And sometimes your trainer has to put water on you. And sometimes the trainer has to rub you down because you have to get your head back right. But you can't go in that next round without your clear senses or you're surely going to get knocked out. If you're taking some head trauma due to some severe trials, take the time in your corner to listen to your trainer. God and the Holy Spirit is our trainer. Get your mind right before you say, I'm going to go back out there and fight. Take that extra time to rinse yourself with the water, which is the word of God. And so that you can just clear yourself. And then when I get back out there, I might need to move around with my hands up just a few seconds to the so I get my senses back. But once you get your senses back, go on the offensive. Like I said, I hope you've been a this has been a blessing to you. And real talk with real people. Um, we're not the traditional, you know, messages, but we're we're hoping that we just give you something that you put a little bit more in your toolbox. So that the more I put in my toolbox, I'm able to fight another day. And we're going to give for the ladies, we're going to give you something to put in your toolbox. And that is on October 21st, my lovely co-host Ronnie Dior will be hosting the Whole Woman Conference. Whole Woman Conference. And um, the thing about it is bag late. And some, some of us have been packing on bags that we should not be packing. And so throughout the concert, they got some dynamic speakers. Um, They got some things that they're going to be providing to you. Um, But it's ultimately to help you emotionally unpack because there are certain luggages and baggages that are not designed to go where you're going. So you want to register early and you want to register for that conference. Um, You can go to www.diormovement.com. Dot com and that's D I O R M V M T. I'm gonna say it again www. D I O R M V M T. And that's for Dior Movement.com. You do not want to miss that powerful conference when Dorset. Um, for the men, don't worry, we got something coming for you in 2024. I don't want to let the cat out the bag, but we're going to be doing something in 2024 around that Father's Day time. So just stick with us. Um, If you like the content that you're getting from us, please subscribe. Um, And if you're already subscribed, give it to someone else um, so that they can um, subscribe. We want to keep putting on quality programming like this. And so in order for 
us to keep putting on quality programming like this. We need to get our subscriptions up so we can get, we got some exciting things um, coming down the pipe, not even just in the teaching thing, um, but also some, you know, some real life stuff. We're going to be taking real life to the streets again. Um, so stay tuned for that. But just so just continue to rock with us. But like I said, the immediate thing is please, please, please sign up for the whole woman conference. www.dr Dior, excuse me, Dior Movement, D I O R M V M T dot com. Um, please keep myself in prayer. Next week, um, the love, my lovely co host will be back. So I won't be hosting this by ourselves. So keep myself and Lady Ronnie D in prayer. We love you. Um, and y'all stay blessed. Um, hope this has been a blessing to you.